Is your Fox shock leaking on your Polaris side-by-side? -side? If it is, we're gonna show you how to get in there and get it fixed. Polaris side-by-sides come with several different styles of shocks and depending on which machine you have will determine if your shock is rebuildable or not. So the ones that are gonna be serviceable, that's gonna be your Fox and the Walker Evans shocks. Now within that category, you know, we have, we're focusing on the Fox shocks today. We're not gonna show you how to rebuild every single one, but the ones we're gonna focus on are the Fox Podium X, the 2.0, and the Podium QS3s. The machines you can find these shocks on are gonna be your Razor 800s, the 900s, as well as the General 1000s. But whatever you have, it's gonna be a similar process for any of the Fox piggyback shocks that aren't electronically controlled. So if you have one of these shocks, we're going to show you how to get in there and replace all those seals. We got this rebuild kit under the OEM diagrams. Now, Polaris recommends installing one of these kits every 1,500 miles or every year, depending on what machine you have. But, you know, I know a lot of you guys are going to neglect that and let it go further. So the other time you'd be doing this is if you have a blown seal. So with all that being said, you do want to refer to your model specific service manual for more information and specs. As far as parts go, we're gonna need a rebuild kit. It's gonna be one per shock. And where you find this is under the OEM diagram. You're gonna scroll down. There's not gonna be a number for this, but it'll just say rebuild kit. So again, one per shock. We're also gonna need some seal grease. We have the five weight shock oil. This stuff is from Zebros. And then we're also using some suspension cleaner. To do this job, we're gonna use some safety glasses, rags, rubber gloves, a drain pan, common hand tools, and for specialty tools, you're going to need an IFP setting tool, a nitrogen needle, a shock pump, and a shock punch or spring compressors. To start out, we've already removed our shock from our machine. If you need to know how to do that, reference your model specific service manual. We have this as clean as we can to this point. Now from here, some of these bushings are gonna be removable. You can pull those out and there's gonna be an O-ring behind there, but ours, we're just gonna leave these ones in on this style. Now, the next thing you wanna do, you've got a compression adjuster. So we're gonna turn the, this adjuster all the way clockwise and count the clicks and then write that number down. So we're only five out on this one. Then once you have that written down, you're gonna turn this adjuster all the way counterclockwise. And keep in mind, you know, some of these models, it's gonna be a little plastic knob, or you might even have a dial. But the main thing is uh, record where it's at and then turn it all the way counterclockwise. The next thing you need to do is measure the spring preload. So we're gonna go from the top of the shock. And we're gonna measure down to that top retaining ring. And that way we can get that spring length back to its original position. We're right at 139 millimeters of preload. And then from here, you can use a spanner wrench on the lock ring and the preload adjuster and back that off. And then you can remove that spring seat. But I wanna show you guys the easiest way to get it done. You're not gonna have to mess with those preload adjusters. You're just gonna use these Tusk spring compressors and then we can remove that spring seat. And then we're just gonna tighten these down evenly on both sides. And I'm just gonna throw the shock in the vise to better show the process. Now keep in mind, we are using these soft jaws. So make sure you have something like that. Okay. And we'll slide that bumper out of our way. And then that spring seat. Now we can pull the spring off. Just pay attention to how everything comes off. And then from here, we want to clean everything off really well before we start disassembling this. There's some dirt up underneath here that we couldn't get at earlier. So make sure you get all that cleaned away. Now that we have the shock cleaned up, we're going to release the nitrogen pressure. So the Fox Podium X and the 2.0, you're going to remove that nylon ball with a pick. The next thing we need to do is release the nitrogen pressure from the shock. So to do that, we have this nitrogen needle. This one's from Racetech. It's available on our website. 
So we're gonna set that in here. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. Then we're gonna press down on the Schrader to release that pressure. Now we can remove the needle and we need to depress this cap just a little bit so we can use a, sap, a socket and a hammer. I'm gonna press down on that. Probably don't even need the hammer on this one. And all we're doing, we just wanna expose that retaining clip right there. Then we're gonna use the shock clip pick tool to remove that clip. There's a ton of sand down in there and I don't wanna get that in my shock. So I'm going to remove this from the vise and spray that out. Now to remove the cap, there's a couple different styles. Some of them have a bolt right on top. You can use pliers and just pull up on it. Other ones, you're not gonna be able to do that and you're supposed to use a special tool, but the easiest way in just about any case is reinsert that nitrogen needle, just take a shock pump. We're just gonna pump the cap up. We're gonna be really careful because we don't want this to pop off, but we're gonna give it just enough pressure to push itself off. The next step is to remove the bearing cap. This is gonna look different on the newer models. So newer ones, you can actually use a hammer and punch to remove those. They do make a special tool to remove it. If you wanna use that, go ahead. But on this older style, you're actually gonna unscrew it. And for us to get a little better clamp on the shock body, we changed its location in the vise. So instead of being on the eyelet, we clamped at the top of the body. And again, we're using soft jaws. You see some little bit of fluid coming out. We do have our drain pan underneath already. So we'll go ahead and unscrew this the rest of the way. And this one just pulls right out. On the type that you knock the cap off, there's gonna be a retaining ring under there. So you'll knock the cap off. You wanna spray that area out really good. Make sure there's no dirt in there and then remove that retaining ring just like we did on the reservoir cap. And then once you have the retaining clip out, you can go ahead and remove the shock shaft. From here, we're gonna take our IFP setting tool and we're gonna set that on there and turn this 90 degrees. And then we're gonna press down on this. Now, keep in mind that, you know, if you have one of the newer styles of shocks, this can actually help you remove that shock shaft. Once that's pressed down, you just wanna drain the oil. Then from there, I'm gonna remove that internal floating piston and we're gonna line up the notch in the tool with the tab on the IFP and turn the tool 90 degrees. And then from here, all we're gonna do is finish draining out the shock oil. Now with the shock shaft in the vise, we're gonna remove our piston ring. Some of these don't come off just like that. If that's the case with yours, if, if it's one piece all the way around, just leave it on. Then we're gonna remove this nut from the top so this one's a 9 16th socket. Once the nut is off, we're just gonna use that clip tool or a screwdriver, set that on the end of the shaft, and then from that base plate on, just press that up onto the screwdriver. That way these shims don't get out of order. And if you want, you can use a zip tie to hold everything together. On some shocks, you might have a BOC, meaning bottom out cup. If that's the case with yours, you'll use a socket allen to remove the BOC post in order to remove the piston and seal head. So then we've got that spacer and this is the seal head. We're actually gonna be rebuilding this and we're also gonna remove the bumper. We're also gonna remove the compression adjuster from the body. This step is recommended to help with cleaning, but not absolutely necessary. So just be aware of that, just in case your shock requires a special tool to remove this. Remove this screw and O-ring from the IFP. We're gonna remove that piston ring from it and the O-ring. And then with the cap, we're gonna remove this O-ring. We've got two on the compression adjuster. And from here, we're gonna get everything cleaned up. We are gonna to wait to remove all the seals and everything from the seal head. We're gonna do this all at once. And as we clean all these parts up, definitely wanna be inspecting them 
and looking for any obvious signs of damage. For example, on the shaft, if it was bent or if this chrome was worn through at any point, you wanna get it replaced. Now, if there's little pits or a little nick in it, sometimes you can clean those up with a little bit of emery cloth or some Scotch-Brite. Now, with the shock body, all you're looking for, you know, if the anodizing inside of here is worn off, then you know you've got problems and need to replace this. But other than that, you're just gonna be looking for cracks or again, obvious signs of damage. And I do wanna mention, we can be tearing this stuff down a little further, but we don't need to. So this is as far as we're going with it. And if you feel any nicks in this thing, you definitely wanna clean them up with some emery cloth. Now with the shims, I'm just gonna spray them off as best as I can. The fluid coming out of the shock wasn't super dirty, so I'm not too concerned that there's a ton of junk in there. But if your shock fluid's super dirty, you can put that zip tie on there. Make sure you keep them all in the same order and then kind of separate them and make sure they're 100% clean. Now the bumper, you can just wash this off in some soap and water. And for the seal head, before we rebuild this or replace the seals in it, we're just gonna spray it off. Now to rebuild the seal head, we're gonna start by removing that outer o-ring and then for these inner seals there's an o-ring and a couple seals in here and it's really important to pay attention to the orientation of everything and make sure you get all that stuff back in the same way now with the newer shocks that have the cap you're going to have a seal on that cap and there's going to be a backup washer and seal that need to be removed from the seal head when you're using a pick to do this just be careful you don't damage this seal head and on this one, to help me out, I had to use a small screwdriver as well. And after that, we've got an O-ring. And from here, this thing is really filthy. So I'm gonna clean this off and then we're gonna use a new rag for assembly. Once you have this seal head cleaned up, you wanna inspect this bushing and make sure it's in good condition. So there's a Teflon coating on top. If that's worn through, then you definitely wanna replace this entire piece. But ours is looking good. You're gonna to need to use some seal grease. We're gonna grease all this stuff up really well before we install it. So we're gonna start with the O-ring. And for me, it's actually gonna be easier to start from the bushing side. So you can use your finger to push this in place or you can use the back side of a pin. So the O-ring's all the way seated and that sits right next to the bushing. The next one we have is that oil seal. I'm gonna grease it up. The open side of this is gonna be closest to the bushing. So with this sitting right here, the bushing's down. So that open side is gonna go down. There we go. So yeah, just pressing on that back side and pushing down from the top, kind of help pop that into the groove. We've got the wiper. And for this seal, we're gonna have the lip facing out. I'm gonna put just a little extra grease on and last, we have that outer O-ring. We've laid out all of the O-rings that match with the ones we took off. That's why it's so important to keep everything in order. And then we're gonna lube up the O-rings. We're gonna start with the compression assembly, or the compression adjuster. We've got that clear O-ring. Now, this O-ring, there's another O-ring that looks pretty similar, but it's a little thinner. And you wanna make sure you're using the one that matches the one that came off. Then we've got the reservoir cap, the thicker ring on that floating piston, and the little guy on the screw. Now, one thing I wanna point out is the new piston ring that came in our kit is different than the one that came off. This one stepped and you will need a special tool to get this one installed. So if you have the special tool, great. If you don't, what we're actually gonna do is make that same step on this new ring. Now, a couple things I wanna point out is on the newer style shocks that have the separate shock body cap, the seal replacement's gonna be the same way, but 
it's just going to be a separate piece right on the end. If you did decide you wanted to replace this bushing, it is possible. It's a little bit of work. You're going to take a 5 8 inch tap. You'll thread that into here and then hit that through from the other side and then press a new bushing in place. Now for reassembly, we're going to install the shock bumper. The next thing you want to do is use your seal bullet and install the bearing cap and the bearing assembly. But for us, we have all that built into one thing. So we're going to install this whole seal head. If you don't have a seal bullet, what you're going to do, just make sure everything's lubed up really well. Normally I don't recommend this, but this corner isn't super sharp. So what we're going to do is gently work the seal head onto the shaft. After that, we have a spacer. After that, we're going to install our shim stacks and piston. Make sure they go on the same way they came off. So we have this base plate right at the bottom. And last, we have that washer on top. And on the 2014 and older shocks, the nut is typically torqued to 18 foot pounds. And on the 2015 and newer models, it's typically 22 foot pounds. Now this spec is for the nut or the BOC post, depending on what you have but always refer to your model specific service manual to verify. Then we're gonna put a little Loctite on this nut. And again, ours torques to 18 foot pounds. All right, now we've got the shock body back in the vise and we need to install this compression assembly. I've grease all over these threads and uh, I'm actually gonna put a drop of Loctite on them when I install this. So I wanna clean them off. And we can install this and tighten it down. All right, now we're ready to fill the shock body with some oil. But before we do that, we want to make sure that our adjuster screw is backed off all the way, which ours was. So we're going to fill this shock body reservoir with oil all the way until that retaining ring groove. And this stuff's just going to start flowing into the shock body. And the whole point of doing it this way, instead of filling up both sides, is to bleed any air bubbles out of this section of the shock. Once you have the fluid where it's staying pretty close to that retaining ring groove, we're going to install the floating piston. Just going to try to press down on that evenly. Now keep in mind, you know, if you press this too far right now, it's going to shoot some fluid up. Before we shoot that fluid up, we're going to install this new piston ring on it. You're gonna to wanna to hold that in place and make sure it's lubed up. As you press this down, just do it really slowly and some of that shock fluid's gonna come out of the top of that hole. And the reason you don't want that screw in yet is because you're help, helping to bleed some of that air out from the top right now around that piston. Oop, there it goes. And then we're gonna press this down just a little past that retaining ring groove. You want to make sure that that piston stays submerged under oil this whole time. And while it's submerged under oil, you want to get that screw installed. Once the screw is bottomed out, it might spin that internal floating piston. What we're going to do now is take our IFP setting tool. We're going to set that on there, turn it 90 degrees. And then we're going to press all the way down on the floating piston. That's going to help bleed some of that air out of the shock body. We're going to fill the shock body up until it's about an inch from the top. We're pretty close right now, but we're just going to add a little bit. And once we have that topped off, we're going to pull up on that floating piston. We're going to move it about halfway up into this body. We're going to do that a few times. You can see some air bubbles coming to the top. Now we're going to move the floating piston until it's about an inch from the top of the reservoir. And I'm gonna remove this IFP setting tool. And then we're gonna take our screwdriver and turn the compression adjuster all the way clockwise. Now we're gonna take the shock fluid and we're gonna fill it to about a quarter inch below the shock body threads. We'll set our piston ring in place and then we're going to install the shock shaft and some of that fluid's going to overflow. That's all right. And uh, I also used a zip tie to keep this bushing up out of the way. 
but we're just going to pump the shock shaft up and down about an inch. And we're going to work some of those bubbles out. So once you get most of the bubbles out, you can pull the shock shaft up so it's still submerged at least by a quarter inch of oil. And then we're going to tap it three times with a mallet. And that's just going to help open that shim stack and help any remaining bubbles come out. So once everything's bled up, you want to top off the oil to the edge of the body. And then we're going to install that cap. I'm going to cut this zip tie. We've got this bushing. It's going to go down. We have the bearing assembly. It's exactly what you want. You don't want any air in there at all. So I'm going to hold up on the shock shaft while I screw this in by hand. And then as soon as I can't screw this in by hand anymore, that's when we're going to back off the compression adjuster. We'll get that screwed on the rest of the way and tighten it down. Next thing you need to do is remove that screw from the internal floating piston. So I put a little bit of grease on the end of this to make sure it sticks to it. And, you know, make sure when you remove that, that the piston is still submerged under that shock oil. Then we've taken our IFP gauge, we set the depth. So ours is gonna be 3.4 inches for the back shocks, 2.4 inches for the front shocks. Keep in mind that spec is specific to our shock. You need to reference your model specific service manual for the IFP height on your machine. So we'll install that IFP setting tool. We're gonna to press it down all the way and oil is gonna come out of that, set, uh, that center hole. And when you do this, you wanna make sure this shock shaft is fully extended. And then once that's set, we'll reinstall the screw with the O-ring and I'm gonna put some fresh grease on this so it stays in place. You can use an open end wrench to help get this tightened down. Now we can remove the shock body from the vise and dump out any extra oil. And we're gonna install that reservoir cap. And I know some of the manuals tell you to remove that bolt for the filler. And if you did take that out, make sure that gets back in place. And we're just pressing the cap down far enough that we can install the retaining ring. We're gonna make sure that's fully seated. And then from here, what we're gonna do is press down on the shock shaft. And that should help the reservoir cap seat all the way. Now, once the shock shaft is pressed in, it's really important that you don't pull it back out. You wanna fill this with nitrogen. If you don't have it, you wanna clean the shock body off, bring it to your local shop. The 2014 and older models are typically 200 PSI and the 2015 and newer shocks should be 100 PSI. Again, refer to your manual. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this up and fill it with some nitrogen. Once you have the shock filled with nitrogen, you wanna compress it all the way down and let the shaft extend all the way on its own. If you see any dropouts or it doesn't extend all the way on its own, something is wrong and you need to go back in there and figure out what it is. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our shock spring. Make sure you reset your adjusters if you loosen those up. And that's everything you need to know to get your Fox Shock rebuilt on your player side by side. If you need that rebuild kit that we use today, it's available under the OEM diagrams, or if you need any other parts for your machine, check those out on our website. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more helpful content. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching.